the AA5 comes with doors that can open, but they don't do that on their own. Let's show you how. We'll start with one side panel and go ahead and place the doors into that side panel. We'll go ahead and place the door into its spot so that we can go ahead and mark where the door will be. This helps us align our holes that we'll create later. And as you can see here, it leaves a nice, nice little space for us to work with. We'll go ahead and turn it around and do the other side. That's a pretty good mark there. So let's now open the door and we'll go ahead and mark those lines so that we can have a marking of when it's open and closed so we know where we can drill when we're going to put in the pins. The crossing of the two lines will give us an approximate location to put our hole when we go ahead and drill there. So let's do the other portion now. We have to do the bottom, in which case we're basically doing the same thing, marking both sides so that we can get that set up for when it's closed. Once that's been marked, we'll turn around and set it in its open position. You'll have to be careful holding on to this because as you see, it likes to slide around. But once you have those marked on both sides, then you'll have a pretty good idea of where these pins will go when we're ready to start putting pieces together. So our initial holes are going to go in these points approximately where they're crossing, but not quite there. And we'll show you why in just a moment. You'll want to go ahead and pull the side panel off so that it's easier to work with. And that way we can go ahead and put our holes in. Now we'll go ahead and put our matching holes into the sides of the door itself. Now you're going to want to do this very carefully because you only get one shot at it. What I'll normally do is to put a small little pilot hole just to see if I can get it on the center or close to it. You see it's a little bit to the side here, so I'll keep going back to try and make sure I'm getting toward the center. It's not perfect, but it will work for what we need. So our next step is to go ahead and drill deeper into it. We just want to be sure that we're drilling straight. That's why I'll turn from top to side and probably back to top again, just to make sure that I'm still staying within the plastic itself. If you start to see the plastic turn white, you'll know that you're getting off or close to the outside. You probably want to go ahead and stop at that point. Here I'm checking the depth of it just to see if it's deep enough or if I want to go a little bit farther. In this case, we're going a little farther. So with this distance being what I want it to be, we'll go ahead and do that for the other pieces offline. For whatever material you're using, you want to be sure that it's flat because inside of that plastic, if it's cut, like you see here, it will actually dig into the plastic in a way we don't like. Easiest way to cover that is to basically rub the end onto a piece of 400 or better grit sandpaper, and that can flatten it out and you'll be ready to go. Since I'm using two wires at this point, I go ahead and flatten two of them. If you're using a single wire, you would just have to flatten it in between. Now we'll take our top door and double check against the lines that we have in place 
so we can decide where we're going to put that hole. Now, when we're going from the top portion, this is a little more difficult than doing the bottom. So we want to be a little careful to make sure that we put the holes where they're going to line up. You don't want to be too close to the top because if you are, your door isn't going to be able to move at all. We'll go ahead and put that hole right on the line rather than above the line just to give us that little extra bit of space. The nice part is that these doors do have a little bit of give, so you don't have to be exact. And as you'll see later, I wasn't quite exact where I wanted to be. Here we're putting in the hole for the other side. What I found also from experience was that by putting these holes in, they're actually going at an angle. And that doesn't work so well because the pins that you use are also going to be going at an angle. So I actually went back through the holes and used my drill to go ahead and widen the hole just a little bit. And that helps the door to actually connect the way I want it to connect. Once we have our holes in place, we can go ahead and put our door in and use our wires pressed through the side and into the door. We'll do one at a time and see how it looks. Go ahead and push the wire through the hole and then line up the wire with the door and give it a little more push. Now we can come and do the same thing on the opposite side. I find it's easier to push the wire all the way through, then back it up just a little bit, and then align it with the hole that we have. So we've wiggled our wires into place, and as you can see, we've got a little more space on one side than the other, even though it does open the way we want it to open. To try and deal with this gap that we've now created, we'll go ahead and open up the hole, as I'm pointing out here, so that there's a little more room for it to move. Uh, we'll demonstrate that with the bottom in a little bit. We'll go ahead and push our wire through the hole and into the door like before. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side and let's see how it turns out. That looks a lot more even. Now we'll go ahead and cut the extra wire. We can leave a little bit in the side of the door when we go ahead and put everything back together. So there's no problem with having just a little extra. Safety tip, don't let your wire go flying when you cut it. In my particular case, I have a backstop, so I don't have to worry about it flying and hitting someone else. You do want to be careful, though. Adding pins for the bottom door isn't much different than doing it for the top. For the bottom, we'll check our alignment and make sure that we can put our hole where it needs to go. In this particular case, we're going to go just inside of our mark so that we can give it a little bit of room to work. The nice part about the bottom is that you can go ahead and bend the other portion so that you're getting a straight drill here. You'll see how the bottom portion is kind of bending as I'm working on it. See? I even pointed to it. Do the same thing on the other side, and you're good to go. You may notice that I actually should have put the hole a little bit farther down rather than right at that mark that I had made. Unfortunately, that caused things to be a little off kilter, 
but we'll show you in a bit how to go ahead and correct that. Here we're trying to go ahead and set everything up, get our pieces connected, and see how she looks. Getting the pins into the hole can be a bit of a challenge. Take your time with it. Here we'll go ahead and check to make sure that everything lines up. And it does for the most part. But once we look at the bottom, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference on the sides. So what we'll do on the right side is go ahead and open up that hole a little more. Basically coming in and drilling it a little bigger. And since that's not working the way we need it to, we grab our hobby knife and just carefully open up a little more plastic. It doesn't need to be a whole lot, just enough so that we can get that movement. We'll try putting our pin back in again and check that our alignment is what we want it to be. Again, these can be tricky. Take your time. Now we'll check our setup, and hey, it looks exactly like we want it to. So we'll cut off our excess wire. We'll go ahead and put it back onto the side of the AA5 so we can double check and make sure it fits the way we want and that it actually opens and closes without any problems. There's our close and there's our open. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down at the bottom and thanks for watching.